We do not want to or cannot do without. We have become accustomed to things for a long time, to an infinite variety of products, to a life of abundance. But we do have a real problem. All these things use up too much of what nature provides. Far too much land, water and raw materials. Too many natural resources. For houses, cars, t-shirts, deodorants, mobiles, toilet paper, for our kitchen equipment, laptops, lawn mowers. And even for a washing machine. With most of these things we merely satisfy our daily wants. With others, however, we greatly exaggerate. Continuously we demand the newest models, huge and fully equipped flats and journeys to the other end of the world. We want to move ever faster and constantly communicate with other people. We consume an enormous amount of products that we believe make our life easier. Things which we buy, use, throw away and replace again with ever larger, faster and better things. No matter whether it's a car, a laptop or a fashion magazine with 150 pages. Many of the resources removed from nature for producing our products are not contained in them at the point of sale. Enormous quantities of water were used during the production process, energy and raw minerals. They are in metals, plastics, bricks and cement in our entire infrastructure. Additional resources are required when putting products to use. Energy, lubricants, detergents, water and a host of other things. Even at the end, when our products are recycled or just disposed of, we need to use resources yet again. However, we must not forget one thing. Our world is finite. We have only one Earth. Everything that we humans have created requires materials which we find on our Earth and its ecosystem. No country possesses all the resources it needs for its prosperity. Oil can be found particularly in the Middle East, iron ore in China, and gold in South Africa, for example. Lithium is mined in South America. And wood consumption rises, even while forests disappear. Each country, therefore, depends on other countries for its resource demands. This is the reason why national resource need to become political issues. The industrialized countries use more than they would be entitled to in a fair distribution. They represent 18% of the worldwide population, but use 80% of the worldwide raw materials. Each German uses 60 tons of natural materials for his lifestyle in a year. Each American as much as 130 tons. While an Indian in the countryside today uses just 3 tons. Tendency rising. By 2030, 20% of the most important industrial raw materials which we need for our prosperity will have reached their maximum production. Nevertheless, we still desire more. This consumption of nature, this use of resources, forces unwanted changes in our ecosystem. Land use, soil loss, water and material consumption and the many other negative demands by humans lead to climate change and species extinction. The world that we depend on for our lives is jeopardized. These man-made disturbances of the ecosystem together with a rapidly growing world population worsen the situation dramatically. Deserts keep expanding, diseases increase. As do wars for water, fruitful soil and scarce raw materials endanger the life and prosperity of future generations. People in the industrialized countries are wasting resources at the expense of people in developing and threshold countries. 
Western lifestyle is not possible in a global scale because the Earth has not enough resources. The final products that emerge contain only a fraction less than 10% of the original mess taken from nature and almost none of the water used up for their manufacture. We must rethink and learn to manage the economy sustainably and eco-intelligently. Humankind can ultimately only survive on Earth if we achieve a radical reduction in resource use and consumption by dematerializing the entire economy. But what does this mean for us? We must learn to use less from nature for the same product or the same service. We must increase our resource productivity. Even now, if we wish, our washing machine can clean our clothes using cold water. Improved technology will save electricity and water. Washing powder can be replaced with ozone or ultrasound. In the future, new textiles may even make washing superfluous to some extent. We could share with our friends and neighbors many of the things we rarely need or use. The power drill, for instance, the lawn mower or the skis. The goal is to use things instead of possessing them. For this purpose, we must design our products in such a way that they are longer lived and more serviceable, repairable and reusable, easy to dismantle and recycle. New technologies are adaptable. and increasingly replace outdated inefficient technology. New solutions must be devised to use existing technologies in a new way and create synergies. With new materials, all technologies can be dematerialized, such as propelling ships with high-flying sails, using biomass-derived fibers instead of steel. Solar power enables electricity and heat generation to be provided directly to our houses. In the future, we will be able to produce 100% of our heat, electricity and fuel using regenerative energies. We have created enormous material prosperity but we have already used up the majority of our worldwide raw material resources. Now we must take responsibility and adapt our economic policy accordingly. Today's prices do not reflect ecological reality. Instead of taxing wages and work, taxes and charges should be levied on resources. Eco-intelligent organization and sustainable design of services, products and infrastructure will provide the same quality of life at a fraction of today's resource consumption. We can achieve and manage the necessary changes by applying a cost-free and truly inexhaustible resource at our disposal, our creativity.